DNA nanoballs. How do they stack up against the gold standard of Illumina DNA sequencing? This and more on today's episode of Bad Genome. So yesterday, I got a chance to visit this genetics lab right here in Malaysia. And what really impressed me was seeing a BGI, a BGI DNA sequencer in real life. I mean, I've never seen one before. This is really something. Mm-hmm. It's really amazing. Now, coming from the UK and working in a cancer lab, working with Genomics England, we all used the same technology, Illumina. <laughs> Illumina, it's the gold standard. No questions asked. But we need to remember that DNA sequencing is relatively new and it's developing, it's changing all the time. It involves chemistry and physics and engineering and biology. And so one way that technology can advance is through competition. Kind of like your mobile phones, you know, you have Apple and you have Android. So in this case, you have Illumina, which is based in the US, but you also have this company called BGI, also known as MGI, that's based in China. Now a bit about the tech. Both BGI and Illumina essentially work the same way. You know, there's a camera that's pointed down at a piece of glass, and this glass is called a flow cell. That's just it's just a piece of glass. And this camera takes pictures of the DNA that's stuck to that glass, to that flow cell. In a three-step process, again similar across both sequencers, a molecule sticks to the DNA string and it sparks a light. And the camera takes a picture of that spark of light. And that's it, it's really simple. You add another molecule, one by one, and you take another picture, one by one. And the color of the light tells you which DNA letter stuck to which DNA string. And that's how you get your sequence of DNA. Now, the difference. The difference between BGI and Illumina, it's how they multiply these pieces of DNA strings. Now, Illumina does this by growing each piece of string one by one on that piece of glass. From one piece of DNA, you end up with many copies of that DNA, producing many dots on your photograph. But BGI does this before it gets to the glass. That is, the string of DNA is glued at both ends and it forms this kind of like a loop. And there's a replicator that goes round and round the loop, copying the DNA again and again, producing a long string that bunches up into a ball, also known as a DNA nanoball. Now these nanoballs are negatively charged, so they repel one another, they don't stick to one another, but they do stick to the positive charge that's evenly spaced out on the flow cell. And BGI claims that this gives a cleaner signal for the camera to capture, and that's basically it. So the big question is, which is better or which is cheaper? And the truth is, it's not really that simple. Like our phones, you know, some people have preferences, you know, based on what they're used to or maybe even what they can get their hands on. In the UK, it is Illumina, but here in Asia, we have more options. Not just BGI, but say Nanopore, which was used by Indonesia to sequence their COVID samples during the pandemic. And what I would say is, it's just helpful being aware of your own technology but also of the alternatives and seeing that there are advantages and limitations to all of them. Anyways, uh, check out this video where I kind of like fanboy over the technology. It was really, really cool. And thanks again to Neogenics and to the friends that allow me to have a look at their setup. It was just so encouraging and so impressive. And consider liking this video or subscribing to this channel if you found value in it. Or if not, just let me know in the comments how we can improve. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Goodbye.